Hey everyone, Vanderhorst here, bringing you some more information from an interesting article I just found. I appreciate you guys tuning in to watch the video as well. If you're new here, leave a sub on the channel. Let's go ahead and get into it. This video, I want to talk about the, how the US Navy has patents on tech and it says it will engineer the fabric of reality. What does that even mean? Okay, uh, the US Navy's UFO patents sound like they've been ripped straight out of a science fiction novel. So this article was written on February the 3rd, and I really wanted to go over this with everybody for the YouTube, because I thought this was so fascinating, uh, you know, with all the different quantum mathematical stuff that's been going around lately. I think it's really interesting to see that technology is going to catch up to recent discoveries, and rather quickly too. That's the most beautiful part about it. It said, let's read it. Okay, so the U.S. Navy has patents on weird and little understood technologies. According to patents filed by the Navy, it is working on a compact fusion reactor that could power cities, an engine that works on using inertial mass reduction, and a hybrid aerospace underwater craft. Whoa, that definitely sounds like some futuristic technology. Uh, dubbed the UFO patents, the war zone has reported that the Navy had to build prototypes of some of the, this technology to prove that it worked. Holy crap. Dr. Salvador Salvatore Cesar Pais is the man behind the patents and the war zone has proven the man exists, at least on paper. Pais has worked for a number of different departments in the Navy, including the Naval Air Force Warfare Center Aircraft Division, the Naver and NALCAD, and the Strategic Systems Programs. So this sounds like another Bob Lazar. If you're unfamiliar with who Bob Lazar is, uh, he is the one who revealed the existence of Element 115, uh, bombarding it with photons will generate anti-gravity of sorts. Uh, I'm drastically paraphrasing, but please, please go look that up, Element 115 and, and uh, Bob Lazar. Uh, basically, the guy is a genius. He put a jet engine in a Honda, and that's how uh, the secret space program found him. Uh, so getting back to this article, the SSP mission, according to its website, is to provide credible and affordable strategic solutions to the practical warfighter. That makes sense. Uh, I heard somebody tell me one time that um, future wars are not going to be like bullet firing wars and bombs and stuff. It's going to be silent secret wars like this with technology and dissemination of information and all that. Nobody's going to know what's true. Nobody's going to know anything like that. It's amazing. Uh, okay, so let's see. It's responsible for developing the technology behind the Trident class nuclear missiles launched from their submarines. Jesus. I wonder what the Trident class nuclear missile is. I need to look that up too. The patents all build on top of each other, but at their core is something called the Pius effect. This is the idea that controlled motion of electrically charged matter via accelerated vibration and or accelerated spin subjected to smooth yet rapid acceleration transients in order to generate extremely high energy and high intensity electromagnetic fields. Wow, so this is like an amplification effect. That's what that seems like. Charged matter via accelerated vibration and or accelerated spin. Wow. Subje subjected to smooth yet rapid accelerated transients. That means like boom, 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 being bombarded. Essentially, Pius is claiming to use properly spun electromagnetic fields to contain a fusion reaction. Wow. The plasma fusion reaction he claims to have invented will revolutionize power consumption as we know it. Experts theorize that a functioning fusion reactor would lead to cheap and ubiquitous energy source. Wow. So fusion is the act of bringing atom atoms together. So that actually makes sense if this thing was a perpetual fusion reactor for it to be perpetual clean energy like that. One of Pius and the Navy's patents describes what the propulsion system and fusion drive would be used for. A hybrid aerospace underwater craft, the USOs. Uh, so if you go and look up USOs, un uh, unidentified submergible craft, um, yeah, go look those up. Those are pretty fascinating too about the fishing ships out in the middle of the ocean and how many UFOs have been recorded from those videos. Ugh, it's absolutely fascinating. And then you get into the idea of the ones that were recorded at night and you see the lights traveling underneath the surface of the ocean. That is unexplainable. Just zip, 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 back and forth. Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. Go look that stuff up. Okay, so according to the patent of this aerospace underwater craft, this craft could travel on land, in sea, or in outer space at incredible speeds. 
Other patents invented by Pius and filed by the Navy include a high temperature superconductor, an electromagnetic field generator, and a high frequency gravitational wave generator. So these sound like Tesla technologies, y'all. These truly sound like branch offs of Tesla tech. An electromagnetic field generator. High frequency gravitational wave generator. High frequency gravitational wave generator to me sounds like a, what I call a gravity pump. It's an arm. It's an invisible arm that you can use to push things away or pull them towards you. It's a gravity pump. High frequency gravitational wave generator. So if you can generate gravitational waves on whether they are the a gravity wave A or gravity wave B, gravity wave A being uh, I think what's considered small atomic structure gravity that keeps things together, the bonding of cells, etc. And then you have gravity B, which is like celestial gravity, like bodies in space on the fabric that are dictated how much gravity it has is how much mass it has. So if you have a high frequency gravitational wave generator, high frequency just means very high vibration. So it's just probably a super powerful gravitational wave generator device, whatever that entails. Whatever the act of generating gravity requires, we'll find out soon enough. I tell you that much for sure. That's one of the things I love about, about this channel is you all just let me explore these wonderful concepts and kind of put my own understanding to it. And then I do the re then we do the research and then bam, come to find out that a lot of what we come to understand is real. It's um, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's why I've taken such a relaxed approach to these videos now because I feel like you guys would be able to generate a lot more worth from me just speaking and showing you and leading you to where this information is versus doing all the math for you or doing the work for you i feel like having that engagement with you all is one of the key com components of our channel so is is getting you all to help me look this stuff up and to show me new stuff that way i can go over it on the channel like this you know that's what we do that's what reality decoded is all about it is a it is a decoding of our reality understanding how it's all rendered and how everything is generated in front of us by our intuition in the present and then everything that we grasp with our senses is in the past so I, that's why i love reality decoded so much okay so straight up this all sounds like science fi science fiction and the navy even is skeptical navy authorities call bullshit on pius's inventions and his patents went through a lengthy in internal review at the navarre the war zone obtained emails about the bureaucratic fight between pius and the navy through the Freedom of Information Act, a request that revealed that the mad scientist actually won. According to the patents, some of the technology is actually oper operable. This means that the Navy actually built technology and demonstrated that it works. This mean, let me repeat that. This means that the Navy has practically put metal to mouth to create a piece of technology. What? That's absolutely incredible, y'all. So not only is this is this stuff discovered, but it's built and it's working, at least in prototype form. The physics of what Pius is claiming are beyond theoretical and beyond the kin of the layman or the lowly science reporter, meaning like people like us just can't understand it, but that's half the fun. That's half the fun. But a paper about his compact fusion reactor was accepted by the peer-reviewed institute of electrical and electronics engineers transactions on plasma science say that five times fast and published in the november 2019 issue oh so this is a year ago two years ago no a year and a half ago but we're just now hearing about it in 2020 that's incredible because they okay so it must have taken them a year to build the technology that actually makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense the fact because trial and error then they put fucking regulation to it and everything that makes perfect sense the fact that my work on the design of a compact fusion reactor was accepted for publication in such a prestigious journal as the ieee tps should speak volumes as to its importance and credibility and should eliminate or at least alleviate all the misconceptions that you or any per other person may have in regard to the veracity or truthness possibility um of these advanced physical physics concepts Gee, Manettis, this guy is like, he is 100% sure. That sounds like Will Ferrell's character from Lands of the Lost with his tachyons. He knew that he knew that he knew they were real. This is, I believe this guy. I believe this guy when he says that he has found something because nobody speaks from that level of conviction. Like, this guy's got balls. 
All right, I, I, I'm, I am very apt to believe this, especially since the Navy is on board and has built technology that bolsters this dude's claims. If they've already proved it, who are we to even begin to try and argue with that? The Navy has resources that we can't even begin to imagine. Pius continued to toot his own plasma horn. Do realize that my work culminates in the enablement of the Pius effect, which is the original physical concept, he says. Such high energy radiation can locally interact with the vacuum energy state. The vacuum energy state being the fifth state of matter or quintessence. Whoa. In other words, the fundamental structure or foundational framework from which everything else, space time including, in our quantum reality emerges from. The engineering of the Pius effect can give rise to the enablement of macroscopic quantum coherence. Whoa. Macro meaning the universe as a whole. Macro and then micro is the small. So macroscopic quantum coherence, which means coherence, which means to understand, to comprehend. So the Pius effect is going to enable, is going to allow us to understand the universe as a whole quantumly. Which, if you have closely been following Pius's work, apparently, you understand the importance of this. That actually makes a lot of sense because lately I found out through Ram Das that consciousness is an ocean in which everything else which are represented as waves on top and we as beings of experience live at the energetic crest that is the break of the wave and it's just like when a match strikes a match board when it when it sparks 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 sparks, and then it finally catches flame we are that perpetual moment of understanding that enlightenment okay that's what we are we are that those sparks catching fire that that literal singular moment that is us as as beings as human beings or just entities that experience experience to begin with okay that's what the moment of now really is it is a quantum coherence i love this article i'm so happy i'm doing this this is awesome so <laughs> let's see is there anything else important from this let's see so yeah, the consciousness in which everything resides on is what modern physics calls the unified field. I feel like I've talked about this in a live stream before. Is there anything below this? No. Okay, so I'll scroll back to the top to where everybody can see the title while I talk about the last bits of parts. Oh good, a 12 minute video, that's perfect. So this is, this is beautiful. This is actually a really good way for me to do these videos. So I'm gonna start this as a new series for everybody and I hope that y'all gain some understanding because you see the article, uh, this article is on Vice, sure, but you can find this anywhere. Okay, this was just the most direct article that I found without an ad blocker that said the same thing that the paywall website said. So please, I'll put one of the actual more legitimate sources in the about section, description section of, video, of this video. I am just pulling this information for the sake of having the information on hand, okay? Don't judge the messenger. I just try to bring you guys some good information. So... The ocean of consciousness with which everything resides on can be equated to the unity of everything. We all come from it. We're all going to return to it. So there's this division up here, but unity down here. All right. <clears throat> That's why we teach transcendental meditation, meditation in general, breath work, proper diet, yoga, whatever you want to call it. Just anything that teaches about bringing you back to that moment of now, because the moment of now is when the experience, true experience, it happens. And it's not the intellectual understanding of transcendentalism that gets you to under that gets you to kind of go, oh shit, I get it now. It is the experience of it, experiencing of it. You have to experience it. You have to experience it. So, I'm gonna leave off this episode with a good little uh, anecdote here. I was talking to my dad earlier today about battling depression, and one of the toughest things for a person with depression to admit to themselves. Besides the fact that they are actually depressed, and besides the fact that they actually need help, okay, and from what I, from my own depression and from what I have seen through my dad, is admitting that you are not actually, that you're fooling yourself when all you do is sleep or all you do is things that aren't related to quality of life. When you are depressed, you have to treat it as a disease. When you have the cold, you give yourself chicken soup. Okay, you give yourself hot tea or warm water with lemon or whatever. You give yourself medicine. When you're depressed, if you don't treat it as a condition with which to be cured, you're not going to try and cure it. Chicken soup, whatever you want to give yourself. 
So my healthy dose for you all with depression is one, learn to admit to yourself that you're fooling yourself by not actually giving your body and your mind a fighting chance in order to win this battle against what my good buddy from the whale from Wales calls the melancholy goblin. Thank you, Lou. We we deal we do battle with the melancholy goblin every day. And everybody's body is different. This is actually why I can't wait to get to start my health and wellness channel. Uh, talking about proper diet, exercise, health and fitness, quality of life stuff, proper daily habits, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be a lot of fun when I start the health and wellness catalog. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to talk about. Depression, yeah. So you can't honestly heal from a condition while you're still on the same level experiencing that condition. That's Einstein. He said that you can't solve a problem on the same level of consciousness with which it was created so you must ascend or transcend all right Ram Dass says I walked down the street uh, there was a hole in the street and I tried to avoid it but I fell in so the next day I tried to go around the hole but I still ended up falling into it the third day I tried to jump over the hole still ended up falling in it but the next day I took a different street learn to outgrow your problems that is what I like to call the Arthurian, King Arthur, the Arthurian quest of the Grand Peacock. Your destiny, this is actually a video I'm gonna do all in and of itself is the quest of the Grand Peacock. It's the lifelong destiny that each of us have and by achieving the various milestones of your Grand Peacock quest, you learn to outgrow and facilitate the knowledge that you learn and to battle all of these trivial problems that are that were once like 10 out of 10 problems. So be on the lookout for the Grand Peacock Quest. This one was about the US Navy having patents to rewrite the fabric of technology. And I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent afterwards about health and wellness there. But that's okay because I want to have I want to inject little bits of wisdom here and there. Because if you got something to say, my mom always said say it, but don't say it too loud, or else people will think you're yelling at them. So I love you guys, and I hope you all got some um, good information from this video. So uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.